Hi, good afternoon, statistics. Um, it is lovely to be talking to you, even though I can't be there in person. Um, so I did want to go ahead and start Unit 6 material with you today. Um, it's just a lot of definitions and some concepts that we need to understand um, going forward into Unit 6, which is all about tests of significance. Okay, so to kind of get your brain in the right place, okay, so you don't have to do this on your bell work. I collected that yesterday. Um, but just kind of think about these things for a second because this is kind of the thought process we're going through whenever we're doing these tests for significance. Okay, so think about a court case, you know, that you've heard about in the news or something like that um, or on TV. So whenever they have a court case, is it possible to prove that someone is guilty? And if you think about that for a second, yeah, okay, so... Usually the evidence is presented at the courtroom in order to prove that the person is guilty, okay? However, in a court case, is it possible to prove a person is not guilty, okay? Or is it only possible to show that it's not likely that they are guilty? Take a couple of seconds and think about that. That's pretty significant. In a courtroom, they never try to prove that the person is not guilty, okay? They might show that it's likely that they are not guilty, okay? They can show that, you know, there's things that are um, going on like where they weren't there or it's very impossible that they could have done a certain thing. And so that's, you know, that's great. That gives a lot of evidence one way or the other. But it is absolutely, it's not possible to prove the person is not guilty because that would mean you would have to go and actually like go to the event and see that either the person wasn't there or you would have to take an account for that person's life every moment that they were in that situation so that you could show that they weren't there, okay? So it's very difficult to prove that someone's not guilty. That's why in the judicial system, we have that whole, you know, not guilty until proven otherwise, okay? Because it's better to assume that someone's not guilty and instead prove that they actually did do it rather than to just assume someone's guilty and then have to prove that they didn't do it. That's a much more difficult thing to do, okay? So that concept is going to come into hypothesis testing because basically in statistics, we're going to have a way to answer a question, but it's going to be kind of like a court case. You know, there's going to be evidence presented and we're always going to assume that the, um, the situation is as usual, okay, or nothing changed, not guilty, um, unless we can prove otherwise, all right? So, welcome to Unit 6, Hypothesis Testing. I will get you your targets and your homework and everything like that on Monday when I see you. Um, just so you know, this is our last unit. After this, we'll go into our final project. Um, and just to give you kind of a heads up on what that final project will be, I will help you research an actual article that's out there, an actual statistics article, on a topic that is of interest to you. We'll probably do something um, along the lines of like a career that you're looking into or something like that or a hobby that you're really into. Um, once we pick that article, then you're going to go through and you're basically going to evaluate it using all of the things we've learned this semester. So you'll go through and you'll see, you know, did they identify their means and their standard deviations, um, what tests that they use from this unit, um, and then we'll go through and, you know, if they used confidence intervals, we'll make sure we point that out, normal distributions, et cetera. Okay? So unit six is about hypothesis testing. What is that? Um, so if you want to pause the screen for a second and write this down in your notes. Okay, so hypothesis testing is a formal procedure that allows us to choose between two hypotheses when we are uncertain about our measurement. Okay, so let's pick that apart a little bit first. So hypotheses, I think you're probably familiar with that word from um, science. So hypotheses are guesses or educated guesses. Okay. We're always going to have in hypothesis testing basically two hypotheses. Okay, one is going to be a hypothesis that nothing has changed. The other hypothesis is going to be that something has changed. That's helped you understand this target a little bit here, which is to determine the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. That's the two hypotheses they're talking about. Okay. All right. So formal procedure that allows us to choose between two hypotheses when we are uncertain about our measurement. Okay, and think about that. When are we not uncertain about our measurements? Okay, we realize that there's variability, that when we take a sample, that it's possible that we can get a lot of different results. Okay, and so to decide at which point it is that we can be certain that it's one way or another, that we can make a decision, um, that's an important part of statistics and why we do hypothesis testing. Okay, so to kind of wrap your brain around those two hypotheses, okay, so let's imagine that you took a penny. 
and you're going to spin it. Okay, so you're going to um, put it up on its edge and spin it around. And we're going to see which side it falls on heads or tails. And we're wondering if spinning the penny makes any difference, if it makes a penny more fair or unfair. Okay, so the two hypotheses are going to be called the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the status quo, the business as usual sort of hypothesis. So usually a penny is fair, right? There's a 50% chance of getting either one. Okay, so the null hypothesis is that it stays the same, that the probability of getting either side is still 50%. Okay, the alternative hypothesis is that something might change, that this could actually have an effect on the situation. So the alternative hypothesis is that P is not equal to 50%. Maybe it's greater or smaller. Um, we don't know. Okay. So how would we test this? Well, that's a matter of hypothesis testing, which we'll get into more in later lessons. Um, but for right now, we want to make sure we can identify the null and the alternative hypothesis because we've got a lot of tools on like our calculator and stuff like that that will help us decide between these two. Um, but we do need to know what they are before we actually use those calculators. Okay. So if you want to jot these down in your notes as well, the null hypothesis, and we'll usually use the symbol for it, it's an H with a lowercase or a subscript O. Um, so it's called H naught sometimes as well. This is the conservative status quo business as usual statement about a population parameter. Okay, so words like no change, no effect, no difference are what describes the null hypothesis. So when you're looking at a situation, you're deciding what the null hypothesis is. Always go with well what it probably was before that, um, before we did anything to change the situation. The alternative hypothesis, which we'll represent with a capital H and a subscript A, this is the research hypothesis. This is what we're usually hoping to demonstrate is true, and it represents change. So either it's not equal to what the null hypothesis was, or it's greater than, or it's less than, or something like that. Okay. And I have an example on the next couple slides. Okay. So just to kind of connect it back to the bell work there. Okay. So just like in a trial. We always assume the null hypothesis is true, is true unless we can prove that it is not. Okay, so kind of innocent until proven guilty. Okay, we always assume that the null hypothesis that there's been no change in the situation, unless we can prove that the alternative hypothesis is actually true. Okay, and the way that we word that is we word it as rejecting the null hypothesis. This means that we quote unquote accept the alternative. So this is the phrase that we use to dip, to say that we've proven that um, we're or that we're not going to accept the null hypothesis. We're instead going to go with the alternative one. Okay. All right. So an internet retail business is trying to decide whether to pay a search engine company to upgrade its advertising. In the past, 15% of the customers who visited the company's site by clicking on an ad bought something. As an experiment, the company upgrades its advertising for one day and sees the number of customers buying products increase to 17%. What are the hypotheses? Okay, so this is, you know, true life scenario. So something like this can happen whenever you're running a business. So it goes from 15 to 17%. You're wondering, is it actually worth the extra money? You know, was that a significant increase, 2% of more people buying things? Um, or was it just a fluke? Was it just natural variation in a sample on any given day? Okay. So we have to identify our hypotheses. So the null hypothesis is going to be business as usual or no change. Okay. So if there's been no change, our null hypothesis would mean that we predict that the population parameter really is still 15%. 17% is just part of the natural variation that would happen in the course of a couple of days. Okay. The alternative hypothesis is that something actually did change. And in this case, we're hoping that it actually did get bigger, that the population parameter, the number of people actually buying things really did get bigger. And so we say P is greater than 0.15. Okay. All right. Some notes on what just happened there. Okay. First, notice that I never brought the 17% in. And that is correct, okay? We always refer to the null hypothesis when we form the alternative hypothesis, okay? Now, I use the 17% to just kind of know that I was looking to see that the advertising got bit greater, okay? And that's why I use the greater than symbol, okay? 
but I'm always looking for that population parameter to become bigger or smaller as compared to the original H naught or the null hypothesis. Okay, so just to kind of review real quick here. Okay, so for this situation, the null hypothesis, the no change hypothesis, is that the number of people buying things is still at 15%. The alternative hypothesis is that perhaps the advertising really is doing something and that the number of people buying things is actually greater than 15%. Okay. All right, this brings us to another definition here. Please make sure this is written down in your notes and helps you understand the last part here of our target. Okay. So the significance level is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is actually true. Okay, so the significance level is the probability that, let's say in our last situation here, that I would reject the null hypothesis, that I would think that a change has actually occurred when actually there has been no change, that the null hypothesis is still true. So essentially a way of thinking of the significance level is the probability of making a mistake, of choosing the wrong way. Okay. So obviously, if it's the probability of making a mistake, do, we, do you think we want that probability to be large or small? I don't know about you, but I want the probability that I'm making a mistake to be small, especially if my job is pinning upon it, okay? Because this is what people who um, do statistics companies and stuff like that is what they do, okay? So usually we set a significance level, and we use this alpha symbol here for it. We usually set it at 0 0.05, so 5%. So there's a 5% chance usually on any study that we do, that we would make a mistake, that we would reject the null hypothesis when it was actually true. Okay, so remember that internet company, so the H naught, the null hypothesis was P equals 0.15, and then the alternative hypothesis was that P is greater than 0 0.15, okay? So if we were to have a significance level of 0 0.05, if we were to interpret that in confidence, in context, that would mean that there is a 5% chance you think E is greater than 0.15 when it is not. So that's our chance of making a mistake, that there's a 5% chance we would think that P actually is greater than 0.5 when in all reality it is not. All right, last but not least, you'll notice that we've been using P a lot, okay? You'll hear statisticians refer to something called the p-value, okay? That's the probability that if the null hypothesis is true of getting a value as extreme or more extreme than the value we actually observe, okay? Now I know that's kind of a crazy example or crazy definition, okay? Let me go back over it one more time, okay? So the p-value is a probability that if the null hypothesis was true, so think back to our next company, okay, so if it is true that the number of people buying things is 15%, the probability of getting a value as extreme or more extreme than the value we actually observed. So in the um, study that we did with the internet company, we think that if the null hypothesis was true, P would equal 0.15, but you'll remember for the study they did, on that one day, you got 17% of people buying things, okay? So if the null hypothesis was true, oh, we're thinking about a normal distribution here. If the um, null hypothesis is true, then your mean would be 0.15, and I'm looking for the probability of getting 17% or something more extreme, more extreme mean, greater, okay? Notice that if I find that probability, that's going to give me a pretty good idea of how far away 17% is from 15% in the context of the situation. This could be the deciding factor, what helps me decide between the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. And in fact, it is. Okay, uh, We're going to be calculating p-values, and that's going to help us decide between the null hypothesis and the alternative. Okay, So what is the p-value anyway? So it's kind of a crazy concept. Um, there is a video linked in on our Google site. It goes to a VMO, okay, and it's this guy from, um, I believe he's from New York, and he's explaining a p-value. He does it kind of in a fun way. Um, so please go watch that video at this moment, okay? And just so you know, when the p-value is smaller than the significance level, that's whenever we reject the null hypothesis. When it's larger than the significance level, then we do not reject the null hypothesis, okay? So those are our rules for deciding if you want to jot those down real quick in your notes. Okay, 
So at this time, I would like you to do the exit slip. Make sure you go watch that video before you do that. Okay. And um, have a fabulous weekend.